Saturday at the Joneses. And all is quiet apart from the steady munching of toast. Peaceful, which is as it should be. Meet John Jones. His wife, June, who shares with him the usual commitments. Trudy, 16, named after her grandmother. And Donna, who is 15. You are now about to see a family phenomenon known as the annual reading of the rates. $365! I've got to be joking. A dollar a day to live in your own bloody house. Oh, Mind you, he's got a fair case. What's his name? Nobody likes having to pay money in a lump sum. And it colours his day. <laughs> Look at that. It's disgusting. Used to be able to see the bottom of this river once, see the fish swimming around on it. Now look at it. They ought to do something about it. They, presumably meaning the Commonwealth or State Government, Department of the Environment or some other unspecified organisation. It's these rotten big companies there, the polluters. If I had my way, I'd hit them with a heavy fine every time they looked like pouring their stuff into the river. That's not the whole story. Pollution is a community affair. The Derwent River rises here at Lake St. Clair on the High Plateau. At Derwent Bridge, the river is so clear you can drink it in complete safety. River water after treatment also supplies domestic water to Hobart and surrounding areas. All the way down to New Norfolk, the water remains unpolluted. It irrigates farmlands and grows a variety of crops on rich river flats.
And admittedly, it's about here that the problems start. At the abattoirs, some attempt is being made to stop pollution by the construction of a fat reclaimer. But it's the notorious blood hole which pollutes. The washing down water contains various minute portions of animal matter including blood and intestine. It's a multi-stage problem and should be treated and diverted into extended municipal sewers. The neighbouring zinc refinery is well aware of pollution problems and is making every effort to eliminate them. Metals which go into the river include zinc, cadmium, lead and mercury, as well as there is dissolved sulphur. The sulphur is no major worry as it dissolves in the water. A new plant is being constructed to recover mercury and reduce losses of it to minute levels. Water level does not really show the whole industrial pollution picture. I hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. It's industry that's doing the polluting. They ought to take legal action against them. What about you? Me? It's nothing to do with me. I live six kilometres from the Darwin. Thousands like your family are big polluters too. You've got to be joking. We're not joking, and we'll prove it. Now, where do you think the washing machine empties? Or the kitchen washing up detergent and particles of food? Or the contribution from the bathroom? And, of course, the toilet. As an example, we'll use the Rosny complex, which, like all other plants in the Hobart and Glenorchy areas, gives primary treatment to sewerage. Your family of four, Mr Jones, pours nearly 1,000 litres of sewerage each day into these tanks. This is how it works. As the sewerage flows from the centre to the outside of the primary settlement tank at low velocity, Suspended solids flow to the bottom and are collected as sludge. Floating scum is skimmed off and treated with the sludge in the digester. This is where the overflow ends up. The digester is simply a large tank which has provision to mix the freshly drawn off sludge with the digesting sludge and to draw off the settled digested sludge from the bottom. It may have a floating cover to catch methane and carbon dioxide gas which is a heating fuel. Primary treatment removes a third to half of the strength of the sewerage which is measured by its demand for oxygen, suspended solids and bacteria. By the way, the digested sludge is for land disposal as it is a splendid soil conditioner. 
What's required is a secondary plant. One of the few is at Taruna, where the overflow from primary treatment is distributed uniformly over a depth of stone. In the air, a slime grows on the stone, and this carries out the treatment. An alternative is to blow air into the tanks containing the primary treated sewerage. Primary and secondary treatment remove 90 to 95 per cent of the pollutants. And after secondary treatment, chlorination will remove nearly all bacteria. Beauty, let's have those secondary tanks. But how much they cost and who pays for them? It will cost $300 a household. The council borrows the money and you pay it off over 30 years in rates. Rates? Rates? Ha! The rip-off again. Any excuse to touch us along. Oh boy, me pay for sewage? Never! Who do you think I am, Robert Bella? So bloody, I haven't got all that much money. I'm not made of it. $365 for the